As a photographer, have you ever been asked this question? Have you ever been asked, what is the most special photograph that you have ever taken? And if you have been asked the question, how long have you had to sit back and think about it? Now, the reason I'm saying this is because in an interview that I was giving the other day to a magazine, they sprung this question on me. And I was quite surprised how quickly I knew exactly which photograph was the most special photograph that I had ever taken. And it was because it was personal to me. And I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea to bring this discussion onto the YouTube channel? So before I reveal this photograph to you, and for those of you who follow my work and those of you who know my portfolio, it's not what you're thinking. I'm telling you now, it's not what you think. Let me explain. This whole story goes back whew, 25 odd years to the early 2000s. And as many of you already know, prior to that, I was a commercial photographer. I taught photography and I was a commercial photographer and I photographed for advertising. So it was cars and models and products. And I had built up this extensive portfolio of work. And one day when I was at the College of Photography where we taught, I overheard a couple of the lecturers having a discussion on personal signature. And the discussion went about if there was no signature on the work, would you be able to tell whose work it is? This whole thing came out of a, a study they were doing on, on Cartier Bresson, one of the great street photographers of our time, who had built up such a, a, a incredible signature to his work that you could very much tell uh, a Bresson uh, artwork from just about anything else. So this was the discussion. And then they were talking about different photographers. And then they brought the whole discussion back home and it became very personal. And one of them said, how would you know if it's Martin's work? And the answer that came uh, was meant as a compliment, but in fact, I saw it as the biggest wake up call that I'd ever got. Because the answer came this one of the guys said, you will always know Martin's work because it is technically perfect. And I realized that day, that moment, my work was super predictable. At the same time, I was also looking at, at trying to, to change my work to make it a little bit more interesting. So this just came as a confirmation. And again, you get these moments in your life where a whole lot of things come together at once. I'm sure you've experienced this. And all of a sudden, you find yourself off on a new season or in a new direction. On the very same day, while I was still licking my wounds and walking around wondering what I was going to do, one of my best friends walked in, also a commercial photographer, extremely good at what he did. But he had cut down his work in commercial photography so he could make time for a, a, a landscape project that he was photographing. Uh, later, this whole project took 10 years to complete. It was called Moments of Grace, and he photographed uh, these beautiful panoramic uh, images from all around Southern Africa. But he came walking in, and he said to me, he needs my help. I said, what is it, Chris? He said to me, he would like to do a, uh, an exhibition, but he doesn't just want to put up normal landscape photographs and, and, and I'm saying normal because they were outstanding, but he didn't want to just put up these. He wanted something special. Is there something I can help him with? Maybe we could do uh, an art technique or something that makes them a little bit more interesting. So we headed off to the darkroom and I did some litho prints for him and he loved the look of the sepia tone he was getting, but I said to them, they, they also need some texture. So he said, all right, he'll come back in a few days, see what you can do. Well, I did some texture overlays, I did some examples for him, he came in, he absolutely loved it, so he took the files off, he said he's going to go and see how he would like to have these printed. Let me just show you two of these pieces so that you know what I'm talking about. There's this impressive umbrella thorn which he photographed in, in Angola, and then there's this incredible, almost prehistoric landscape which he photographed in Namibia. So he headed off to see if he could, how he could get this printed, and, uh, and a few days later, he, he walked back in the studio. Now, there are decisive moments in one's career, as I've said to you. And on that particular day, in that particular moment, the decisive moment or seasonal change took place in my life. He walked in, talking 25 odd years ago, in he comes with this box, this beautiful black box, puts it down on my table, and says to me, are you ready for this? 
and he opens the box and it's got this rice paper over it and he says to me and I'm going to give it to you in his mother tongue which is Afrikaans he says to me may Mikey alles het verander and that simply means my friend everything has changed you see at that stage we, uh, if we were going to print color photographs we didn't have a longevity option if we printed in color the prints would only have around about a 10 to 20 year um, lifespan before they started to change color but he had found out about inkjet printing which had just come in and he had gone to see a specialist printer who printed inkjet for him on Hannah Muller Museum etching which had a lifespan of 120 years plus and the result was superb so as he pulled the, the rice paper back I was gobsmacked he said to me look at this paper just look feel it this is artistic and it is going to last well I realized in that moment this was somewhere where I wanted to take my photography as well. I was a little bit confused with everything and I must admit I ran off in all directions at the same time initially. And again, even in outdoors, without controlled light, even in outdoors, I was trying to be technically perfect. I was, I was almost trapped in this, I don't know, this whole thing that had come through my commercial photography days. And then a couple of months later, while I was busy with all of this, uh, I was visiting a large inland lake which was around about sort of 100, 200 kilometers from where we lived. At that stage, I was a very keen sailor and I used to go out and, and compete uh, on a regular basis. So I visited this place uh, time and time again. So on the drive out there, it's in a quite a rural area. You go past these old abandoned houses and abandoned things and I found them quite attractive. So I regularly stopped and photographed them uh, to see what I could get. Uh, here's one of them just to give you an example of what I was up to. And then on the one day I, I, I spotted this really interesting subject. It was the structure that was built right on the banks of the water. And it had a triangular shape to it that was on poles. And then uh, coming out the back and front was this long walkway which extended out into the water. It was, a, it was like a marina but it was it, it stood on its own in the middle of nowhere there was nothing else around it and it was all old and rusted as if it was some kind of a mistake and i realized that this structure was going to photograph really well but every time i went there the light wasn't right the sky wasn't right uh, i could see it wasn't going to work and i'd built up um, I suppose in all my commercial photography days, I'd built up this thing that if the composition's not right, and you know it's not right, don't take the photograph because you're just wasting time. So I did it. And I must have revisited this place about 20, 30 times. And every time, there was nothing really happening. And then one day I was there. Now, I must also explain that, that because of my, my sailing days, I knew or understood the weather patterns there quite well. And what we experienced on the water when you're sailing is because it's a high altitude dam and because it's such a big expanse of water, uh, very often this high pressure system builds over the water. And then if you get weather that, uh, that starts building, it normally builds outside uh, the actual dam itself and these storms run around the outskirts of the dam, hardly ever coming in, but they there. And we also knew that if the high pressure system uh, left then all of this this weather came in it was on the day i was near to where the structure was and i could feel things changing and i headed off to see if i could get a photograph now the sky was was full of of mood and uh, it would surely work when i got there well the storms as i said were out to the one side so the background wasn't that great but anyway i waited it out for a while and then i could feel there was a weather change and then all of a sudden the storm just turns around and starts heading straight for my marina. Well, it all happened so quickly. I set up the camera on a tripod. I was still getting the exposure right. I was still figuring out whether I was going to use filters or not. And the hail came pelting down. And I managed to get two exposures off. And the second one, because the exposure time was slightly longer, I got this lightning strike in it. I mean, it was just that moment where everything came together again a wonderful saying that says careful what you wish for you just might get it 
that day I got it. But the story doesn't end here. At the same time, I remembered that I'd driven past this old car on a pole and I'd wanted to photograph it, but every time I stopped, the light wasn't right as well. It was either falling into silhouette or the sky was, was bland, similar to what I was getting with the marina. And it happened to be only 10 kilometers away from where I was and the sky was still so dark and moody with these storms, I decided to, to have a go. So I quickly drove down, see if I could get a photograph of it as well. Uh, the great Ansel Adams said, if you want to take a great photograph, first learn where to put your camera. And I promise you, I knew exactly where I wanted to put my camera. I'd been past it more than enough times. I knew what I was looking for. And again, because of the, of, of the, the atmosphere, the light was right, uh, just the right amount of light on the car, just the right background I was looking for. I mean, it couldn't have been easier, quite honestly and I took the second photograph. And I knew that day that something inside me had broken. I knew that finally I had some direction. I got back home to the studio and I processed them up and I needed to get an honest opinion because I'm well aware of the fact that uh, we can become very emotionally attached to our work. So I phoned up Chris and I said to him, I need to show you something I, I need your opinion. Now, I must tell you that Kurs is the most honest critic around. I mean, he would never, ever tell you something that was untrue. So, and he had such a great artistic eye that I knew he was the right person. I still again remember sitting down with him at a coffee shop and I took out the print and I said, I'm going to show you something. Give me your opinion. And I put the print out and laid it in front of him. And I still remember his words. He stared at it for a long time, and then he looked at me and he went, shuff, 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 shuff. Mikey, this no buyer, buyer, buyer boy. And that simply means this is really good. And that was it. The abandoned collection that I then worked on for 14 years after that was born. And I was on this mission to photograph old, broken down things in nice, moody lighting. I had found my next step on the ladder and I was excited about life and excited about art and excited about everything. And I also put some strict boundaries in place because I knew myself. I, I said, I will not go out and I will not photograph these with controlled lighting. So I will not use anything like fill in flash or strobes. At the most, I will use a reflector where I can reflect natural lighting, but I'm not going to go and do any artificial lighting with this. And I also knew because I was in commercial photography for so long, I was, I was a good planner. I could plan things. And I knew that, that if I planned to create an exhibition, I was going to create a predictable exhibition. So I also said that in my travels, as I was busy photographing outdoor photography, these abandoned subjects have to come to me. It was amazing how long this whole process took. I mean, it took 14 years to complete uh, the, the series. But it's also amazing how quickly uh, I got recognition because within a couple of years, uh, I'd shot about 12 of these. And in 2007, I was offered an exhibition in London. And leading up to the exhibition, around about a month before the exhibition opening, I got a call from the publicist. And the publicist said to me, that uh, she wanted to feature one of the 12 artworks and asked me which one I would like to. And I said, no, I'll tell you what, you pick. And she said, I just love this old car on a pole. And by the way, I must also just tell you that, that uh, I don't even know what type of a car this is, by the way. I get, I get people coming and telling me it's Austin Healy's and it's this and it's that. It doesn't really matter. To me, it's a car on a pole. To the publicist, it was a car on a pole. And so... I said to her, well, that's fine. What do you need to know? And she said, tell me, Martin, why is the car on the pole? Well, I didn't really know. So she said, do me a favor. Just go out there and see if you can find out. So that weekend, I took a drive out uh, to where, to where the, the car on the pole was standing on the side of the road. There was a, a gravel pathway leading in. I drove down and I found this gentleman over there who was working away. And after a little bit of a conversation, I said to him, can you tell me who put the car on the pole outside. And he said, it was me. And I said to him, why would you do that? And again, I'm going to give it to you in Afrikaans because it sounds better. He said to me, 
Weet jij hoe donker wordt het hier? Do you have any idea how dark it gets here? I was a bit confused. And then he said, especially when you're driving home from the pub late at night. And he said, I drove past my driveway too often and I knew I needed to put a landmark in place. Well, Publicis wrote a wonderful story around this, featured it in some of the magazines, in-flight magazines, and this old car became well known. So let's go back to the question, the initial question. Which is the most special photograph that I have ever taken? Well, the answer is, there is two. They were born on the same day and they cannot be separated. It was because of these two photographs that I actually changed my entire career. It was because of these two photographs that I, I sold up most of my, my studio equipment. It's because of these two photographs that I handed all my clients over to somebody else and walked away from commercial photography. It's because of these two photographs that I've headed into fine art photography. It's because of these two photographs that today I exhibit my work. Now there's that saying that says, if you leave room for misunderstanding, one thing's for sure, you'll be misunderstood. So let me make this clear. When I was working in controlled lighting, I loved every moment of it. In fact, today I think that my outdoor photography hinges and revolves around it, understanding I gained during that time. So to all photographers out there, my advice to you is this. Learn everything that you can about lighting. Learn everything about the color of lighting, the direction of lighting, the quality of lighting, what you can do with lighting, what you can't do with lighting. And the only place you're going to learn this is in a controlled lighting environment. And then take that knowledge and if you want to work in outdoor photography, you can apply that to outdoors. The only thing that you have to do is exercise patience. So, you know, you need to know what will affect the light, how it will affect the light, and then you need to have patience to wait for it to happen. So for me, the two photographs that are special to me happens to be an old wrecked marina and a car on a pole. Thank you for listening.